ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق من منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثات وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار The Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم He said in a hadith and we all know it He said as we know رغم أنف رجل أو باعده الله من أدرك رمضان فلم يغفر له May Allah عز وجل take far away or may Allah throw this person's nose in the dust, the one who reached Ramadan and he failed to be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's as if to say that Ramadan is so great, so immense, so virtuous that the person who doesn't become forgiven in this month, he is the loser. And that's why the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in a hadith, إِذَا جَاءَ رَمَضَانِ When Ramadan comes, يُنَادِي مُنَادِي A caller calls out and says, يَا بَاغِيَ الْخَيْرِ أَقْبِلْ Oh, the one wanting to do good, now is your time to shine. Now is your time to show to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala what it means for you to be distanced and away from him for 11 months. You left Allah for a long time, but you knew your roots. You knew knew where you came from. So then you turn back to Allah. And when your nafs and your soul becomes lazy or tired, then you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words where he says, ma'dudat. That Ramadan is a fixed number of days. Before me and you know it, Ramadan is gone. A fad, is ha- a fad has gone. A fad has gone. A thuluth, wa thuluthu kathir. A fad has gone, and a fad is a lot. And a fad is a lot. But what is the madrasa from fasting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to attain? What is it? We know the ayah, but let us deep it, let us understand it properly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon O you who believe, O Muslim, O Muslima Fasting has been prescribed upon you as it was prescribed and legislated before those, before you so that you may attain God consciousness How do we attain taqwa through fasting? Take this as a moral, as a lesson, and by Allah, you would unleash a new potential within yourself. You would know that subhanallah, I can reach new heights with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't need to fall into indecent and ill actions. How? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made what is permissible for us, what is halal for us generally, Not only is it halal for us, our food and our drink and our relations with our spouse, but without them, human life would cease to exist. If you don't eat and you don't drink and a husband and wife don't procreate, then life would cease to exist. Give it a month, everyone would be off the planet. A month. So Allah is showing to you, not only am I proving to you that you can stay away from halal things. But I'm proving to you, O son of Adam, O child of Adam, O daughter of Adam, that you can stay away from the building blocks of life, the things that without, you would not survive. So let it be known then that you don't need to fall into haram, that you don't need to backbite, you don't need to gossip, you don't need to fall into sin. And that's the meaning of the hadith where the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, 
من لم يدع قول زور والعمل به فليس لله حاجة حاجة في أن يضع طعامه وشرابه Whoever doesn't leave off evil speech and evil actions Allah doesn't need him to leave his food and his drink What is the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling us? He's telling us Wait one second Have you misunderstood fasting? You are staying away from the things that without you would die. But then you are falling into haram things that you can live without, your whole life without. You didn't even need to mention them. Not only that, those haram things that you do, there's a punishment attached to each and every single one of them. And you'll be held account for it. That's why the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that Allah doesn't need you to leave your food and your drink if you still fall into evil actions and bad speech because you've misunderstood how to attain taqwa. Allah showing to you, O Muslim, O Muslimah, your potential that you can leave off the building blocks of life. Then let it be known that you can leave off haram things and you can worship Allah not only in Ramadan but outside Ramadan. What are the fruits and the rewards of those who attain taqwa? There are many. Taqwa will resolve all of your issues and your affairs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, firstly, he says that he loves those who are mindful and conscious of him, that have taqwa. Inna Allah yuhibbul muttaqeen. Allah loves those who are mindful of him. Not only that, when Allah loves someone, nada fi sama, he calls out in the heavens. Inni ahbabtu fulan. Indeed, I have loved so and so. Fahib, So love him. Then the angel Jibrail would love you. And the angel Jibrail would tell all of the angels in the heaven to love you. So much so that all of the angels in the heaven love you. And then Allah Azza wa Jal would put the love on the earth for you. Not only that, Allah says. Wallahu ma'al muttaqeen. Actually, Allah says, Inna Allah ma'al That Allah is with those who have taqwa, those who are mindful and cautious of Allah. Those who are mindful and cautious of Allah. Not only that, but how many of us in life, we find that there's no barakah, there's no ease in our affairs, there's always hardship, there's no barakah, we, we can barely do a few things in a day. Then know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ يُسْرًا Whoever is mindful of Allah, cautious of Allah, makes Allah the main focus. Allah would make his affairs easy for him. He finds his study, his work, his family time, his relation with his spouse, his marriage, all of that. Alhamdulillah, bless it. Not only that, Allah says, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يُكَفِّرْ عَنْهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِ Whoever is mindful of Allah, Allah would forgive him his sins. Do we not want Allah to forgive us? And not only that, وَيُعْظِمْ لَهُ أَجْرًا And Allah would make your reward for the small that you do, the action that you do, so great, so immense, because you have taqwa. Not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would make a way out for you from every difficulty, from every hardship, from every tight situation. Whoever fears Allah, Allah would make a way out for him. Look at Moses alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, when he was at the sea and his people behind him said, Inna la mudrakun. Subhanallah, we're going to get caught up. The people of Pharaoh are going to come to us. It's game over. We're going to die. What did Musa say? Kalla inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. No. Rather, Allah is with me. Mindful of Allah, thinks great of Allah. فَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى مُوسَىٰ أَنْ يَضْرِبْ بِعَصَاكَ الْبَحَرِ So we revealed to Moses, to Musa alayhi salam, strike with the stick, your stick, the sea. فَانْفَلَقْ And the sea, it separated. That is what taqwa does. When Yusuf alayhi salam, when... وَغَلَّقَتِ الْأَبْوَابَ وَقَالَتْ هَيْتَ لَكَ 
when the wife of Al Aziz says to Yusuf, السلام, I have prepared myself for you. Khalas, I'm ready. What does Yusuf say? What does taqwa mean? To be mindful of Allah. It means his mind, wherever, whatever situation he's in, wherever he is, however he is, his mind goes straight to Allah. What does he say? Qala ma'ad Allah. He says, I seek refuge in Allah. And she locked the door and the ulama say, غَلَّقَ here in Arabic, it is that form of fa'ala where it is what? An extra emphasis on the lock to say that Yusuf salam didn't have the keys. There's no way out for him. وَاسْتَبَقَ الْبَابِ And they both run to the door. They both run to the door. And she cuts Yusuf's shirt from behind. وَأَلْفَيَا سَيِّدَهَا لَدَ الْبَابِ and they both find who? The king, the owner at the other side of the door who opens it. What does it mean? Yusuf, he's running to a door that is locked, alayhi salam. But he knows that Allah is going to find a way out from him, for him, from every difficulty. So what does he do? He runs despite the fact that it's closed because he knows that Allah opens the doors like he opened all of the doors of Jannah in Ramadan. He closed all the doors of Jahannam. He can open any door in the dunya for Yusuf, alayhi salam. And so what does he do? He opens the door and Yusuf السلام, is out of the issue. So Allah would find a way out for you from every difficulty. Another benefit of taqwa, everyone perhaps here, maybe some, not everyone, but everyone's pr probably pondering, thinking about their rizq, where to get their sustenance, how you know, to provide for themselves in the future. Subhanallah. Know that maybe there's even some now thinking about work. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the one who is mindful of him and cautious of him and wary of him, Allah will provide for him from ways which he couldn't imagine, from, from directions in which he couldn't anticipate. وَيَرُزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا Allah says, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجَعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whoever fears Allah, he would make a way out for him from every difficulty and he would provide for him from ways in which he couldn't imagine. Not only that, but the Jannah has been prepared for those who have taqwa. What does Allah Azza wa Jal say? He says about the Jannah. That is prepared for those who have taqwa. Not only that, Allah says that those who will inherit the Jannah, those who will be in there, are the muttaqeen. Allah says, Tilka al jannatu allati nurithu min ibadina man kana taqiyya. That we cause to inherit the Jannah from our servants, those who have taqwa, those who are mindful of Allah, not fearful, mind, always cautious, always wary of whether the fact that they are pleasing Allah or not. Not only that, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَإِن مِّنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا there's not one from amongst you, every single human being that is going to cross the Sirat, cross Jahannam. It is a promise from Allah decreed. Everyone will cross the Sirat. What then? Who does Allah save? And we save those who are mindful, those who have taqwa. Those who made Allah the main focus in their life. And that's why the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and I'll end on this hadith. Man kana hammuhu dunya ja'ala Allahu faqrahu bayna aynayhi wa shattata shamlahu wa lam yatihi min ad-dunya illa ma kutiba lahu. That whoever makes the dunya, whoever makes the dunya his main focus, Allah will put poverty in between his eyes. What does it mean? It means he has health, he has wealth, he has a car, he has children, he has blessings, but he fears poverty. So the dunya is his main focus. The dunya is his, is his master. He follows it and he seeks it. Why? Because he fears poverty. And Allah will scatter his affairs. No barakah in his time. He finds that he can only do a few things in the day. No khair at all. And the dunya, he only gets from the dunya what is written for him.
despite the fact that he works 24 hours, maybe four days on, four days off, yani profusively, I mean it above the limit. But then Allah in Nabi Sallallahu said, وَمَنْ كَانَهُ الْهَمُّهُ الْآخِرَةِ Whoever's main focus is the Akhirah. جَعَلَ اللَّهُ غِنَاهُ فِي قَلْبِهِ Allah will put richness in his heart. Because true richness, الْغِنَى غِنَى النَّفْسِ That true richness is contentment in the heart. Not only that, but جَمَّعَ Allah Azza wa Jal جَمَعَ شَمْلَهُ Allah Azza wa Jal will gather his affairs. He has barakah in his time. Barakah in every single thing that he does. وَأَتَتْهُ الدُّنْيَا وَهِيَ رَاغِمَةِ And the dunya would come to him submissively, on its knees, on a plate. He doesn't need to do anything. And he based on what the hadith is saying. So brothers and sisters, let us make the main focus, the main madrasa that we come out of fasting, to know that Allah has showed you some great potential within yourself, that you are staying away from halal things, not only halal things, but you are staying away from the things, the food and the water, that if you were to leave them for a number of days, you would die. But then if you were to leave backbiting and sins and haram for a number of days, would you die? No. But Ravi would only increase you in loss. أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولجميع المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين ثم أصلي وأسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Finally, I say, brothers and sisters, لو قيل تالله لو قيل لأهل القبور يعني if it was by Allah, if it was said to the people of the grave, تمنوا wish لتمنوا يوما في رمضان they would have wished for a day in Ramadan, a day in Ramadan. The Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم he said ركعتان خفيفتان مما تحقرونه وتنفرونه أحب إليه من دنياكم that for the person in the grave, two rak'ahs you deem insignificant, you belittle, no value. For the person in the grave means more to him than the world and everything in it. The people in the grave, if they were to wish for one thing, they'll wish for a day of Ramadan. That's why brothers and sisters capitalize on every moment. The scholars say the reward is so immense, you can't magnify it, you can't measure it. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم إن نسألك الإخلاص في القول والعمل اللهم إن نسألك الإخلاص في القول والعمل اللهم إن نسألك الإخلاص في القول والعمل ربنا اشفي مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين يا رب العالمين اللهم اشفي مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين يا رب العالمين يا شافي يا شافي في إش في مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين ربنا إن نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول وعمل ربنا إننا آمنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وقنا عذاب النار ربنا إننا سمعنا مناديا ينادي للإيمان أن آمنوا بربكم فآمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا إن الله يأمر بالعد والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقيم الصلاة